Did you know this US politician got into big trouble for playing League of Legends? What about this musical icon who played a game on his last day on Earth? These are just two of the biggest names that you may not know frequent Summoner's Rift. But first, this NBA legend's love for League goes all the way back to Season 3 and has even been featured in an official Riot cinematic. That's right, we're talking about basketball superstar Gordon Hayward. Hayward has been a vocal lover of League for years, and of one champion in particular. The man with the strongest right arm in League of Legends, the Barbarian King, Trindamir. Hayward isn't afraid to share his passion for League and its esports scene with the world, if his interviews with fellow NBA legend Rick Fox are any indication. A big weekend uh, coming up here, All-Stars, League of Legends, Team Fire, Team Ice. <laughs> uh, I gotta go with Team Ice. Honestly, okay. <laughs> I love these questions, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm just, wait, I'm just waiting for you to own a team so I can just come, you know. But Hayward's love of the game goes way deeper than simply enjoying himself. In 2017, while playing for the Boston Celtics, Hayward suffered a brutal ankle injury, breaking his tibia and dislocating his left ankle only six minutes into the first game of the season. Needless to say, this left him with a lot of time on his hands. And... How did he spend that time, you ask? The answer is by playing his favorite game. Hayward dove even deeper into League and even began streaming, showcasing his masterful right-clicking ability for the whole world to see. Hayward's League resume is also a pretty impressive one, usually sitting around gold or platinum elo, which is pretty solid for someone who's also a top-tier NBA player. Oh, oh, the play. <laughs> Once Hayward recovered from his injury, he came back to the NBA in full force, and his journey to recovery was featured in an official Riot cinematic. He even made a brief appearance at the analyst desk for the NALCS. Uh, can't wait to actually suit up and play out there, but uh, loving, loving the event today. Happy to be here. But if you think Hayward is a super fan, you have no idea what's coming. Hayward's fandom of the game pales in comparison to the rock and roll supergroup Imagine Dragons. We have been laid on stage in front of like, you know, 20,000 plus people at the arena, literally just due to the fact that we were playing a League Don't of Legends game. It's a secret. <laughs> yeah. Imagine Dragons began playing League when the brother of their lead singer Dan Reynolds introduced it to the group, and the band started playing it to kill time while they were on tour. Eventually, their love of the game got to a point that no one expected. In between the various duties that came along with being a world-famous touring rock band, interviews, rehearsals, equipment tests, etc., Imagine Dragons tried to squeeze in as much league as possible, and it even got to the point where Dan Reynolds would do his vocal warm-ups while he was still in-game. Gotta make sure your vocal cords are nice and primed in order to scream at your monitor when you go 0 and 10 in lane. You'll be surprised to hear that the group initially played exclusively Twisted Tree Line, but did eventually make their way to Summoner's Rift, where they all found their respective mains and have been said to be somewhere between Silver and Gold Elo. Not bad for a group that's also traveling around the world performing live shows on a regular basis. They've even been given an invitation that many of us wish we could get. They've been brought to the Riot HQ numerous times in order to play with League of Legends co-creators Brandon Beck and Mark Merrill. Now that's quite the honor. To top it all off, after the group was discovered to be such big fans of the game, they recorded official promotional songs for League of Legends. The bangers Warriors for Worlds 2014, which in my opinion is still the best Worlds Anthem Ryan has given us to date, and who could forget Enemy, promoting Arcane and helping push the animated masterpiece into the mainstream. Now, while Imagine Dragons has recorded promotional music for League of Legends, our next entry on this list may have gone one step further. I'm talking about the former Brazilian soccer star Ronaldo Luis Nazario de Lima, known simply as Ronaldo. One of the greatest soccer players to have ever graced the pitch, Ronaldo was the winner of two Ballon d'Or awards and was named the FIFA World Player of the Year three times. The guy knows what he's doing on the soccer field. And in January of 2017, Ronaldo decided to invest in one of Brazil's premier esports teams, CNB. 
As athletes, we find and see and be ideals that have everything to do with ours, Ronaldo said. We will transfer to esports the adrenaline of soccer games on the field. Uma grata surpresa ter visto toda a estrutura da CNB e todo o acompanhamento que oferece aos nossos atletas. É, posso comparar com o futebol. Before investing in the team, Ronaldo had also made a public announcement that he was rooting for the team in the 2016 CBLOL final. But after owning 50% of the team, Ronaldo went beyond just investing his money. While Ronaldo is by no means a pro when it comes to league, he did something a lot of team owners don't do. He took the time to learn league and play a game so that he would know where his money was going. While I wouldn't call him a natural, he did end up getting a kill. Hey, we all have to start somewhere, right? <laughs> I don't see Ronaldo getting a challenger anytime soon, but there's no question that he has a deep respect for the game by taking the time to play a match on the Rift and also making an appearance at MSI in the same year when it was hosted in Brazil to present the winners with their medals. Baker, the man himself, the greatest player of all time. Receiving the medal from one of the greatest footballers of all time. A transformative footballer in his own right, Ronaldo was a superstar and then some. Speaking of superstars... For our next Celebrity League lover, we're taking a step off the sports field and onto a field that is arguably much more dangerous and exhausting. The field of American politics. There are actually multiple politicians that enjoy their time on the Rift, but we're starting out with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or AOC. AOC has served as the U.S. representative for New York's 14th Congressional District since 2018. She initially made headlines when she achieved one of the most surprising upsets in recent history against an incumbent who had been serving since the 90s. Hey, you know what they say, out with the old, in with the new. AOC has long been a vocal fan of video games and has even hopped on Twitch for a stream that brought in over 400,000 viewers streaming Among Us with other global politicians. Icon? No. Okay, click it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I knew it. Oh my gosh. However, she has made it clear from a series of tweets that League of Legends is one of her favorites, saying she mains support and loves to play defensive champions aggressively. You do you, AOC. Now, AOC did what many of us did during quarantine. She took to the rift in the hopes of climbing the ranked ladder. In June of 2020, she posted a tweet celebrating the fact that she had reached Silver 3, followed by one lamenting the existence of inting 13-year-olds. We've all been there, Alexandria. Everyone knows that politics must require an awful lot of patience, especially when you're the youngest woman ever to serve in Congress. But according to AOC herself, League has actually given her skills that she transfers directly over into her life in Washington. When asked if she felt League has helped her build up her patience to stay composed in Congress, AOC replied, Getting caught in ELO hell really requires so much patience. You know, you're playing with 12-year-olds rage quitting 5 minutes into the game, it really builds your patience. Extra points to AOC for finding a way to relate League of Legends to a life in Congress. Now, while AOC was grinding away at ranked, while she wasn't busy trying to save the world, Ninja and Mr. Beast were flossing on New Year's Eve and throwing buckets of money at people. The Twitch star and YouTube philanthropist are two more celebrities who are known to enjoy League, to the point where they even organize their own charity tournament with plenty of LOL influencers. Born out of some Twitter banter between the two social media giants, Ultimate Crown, Mr. Beast vs. Ninja was a highly anticipated event that pit two teams led and coached by Jimmy and Ninja against each other in a best of three tournament on Summoner's Rift. Sponsored by Prime Day, the tournament was mainly for bragging rights, but also for a cool $150,000 to be sent to the charity of either man's choice. Both teams had some pretty impressive rosters, including fellow Twitch streamers like Tyler1 and former League of Legends pros like Doublelift and Voiboy. In the end, Mr. Beast swept, winning two games to none and earning $150,000 for the Sarcoma Foundation of America. 
A third charity match was played for a smaller pool of $50,000 on the behest of Ludwig, and Team Ninja was able to pull out a victory, earning some money for the Boys and Girls Club of America. And that is also $50,000 going over to Team Ninja and their charity. Ultimate crown aside, both Ninja and Mr. Beast have been known to enjoy League of Legends on their own. Mr. Beast has said he plays on a regular basis and has done so for over 10 years, and even tweeted that he felt League of Legends was, quote, the greatest game ever made. Some old gameplay of his can still be found on his old videos on his main channel. And while Ninja isn't likely to give up his bread and butter battle royales for MOBAs anytime soon, he does stream League from time to time, mostly playing ADC under the guidance of Coach Nice and getting hyped up for Pentakills. And let's not forget his legendary tweet from 2021. You didn't even ask for the sandwich? And she, she, she also brought chips? For our next celebrity, who was much bigger than Ninja or Mr. Beast in his prime, we're heading back to the world of music whose love for the riff will truly shock you almost as much as his music. I'm talking, of course, about XXX Tentacion, the Florida-based rapper who unfortunately passed away in 2018. XXX Tentacion was one of the fastest rising rappers in the 2010s, with his single Look At Me taking over the radio and streaming services in 2017. But when he wasn't playing concerts or enjoying his newfound fame, X loved to play League, as can be seen from a clip where he's playing Heimerdinger in his living room. He even posted on his Instagram that he was looking for pros to play with, as his account was only at level 12. Tragically, X's life was cut far too short, and after the fact, people did some digging to discover he had been playing League on the day of his passing. So we know that he was a big fan of the game and planned on playing way more than he was ever able to. Rest in peace, X. Hopefully where you are now, there are short cues and no one ever bans Heimerdinger. And if you thought Gordon Hayward was the only NBA star who loved League, you'd be surely mistaken. Nikolai Jokic, the two-time NBA MVP and 2023 World Champion Center for the Denver Nuggets is also a known fan, and the way he made it known was pretty hilarious. See, back in 2019, Jokic hilariously revealed to the world that he was a solo renekton only enjoyer by wearing his iconic Boom What Up t-shirt during a post-game interview. And just last week, the Serbian superstar once again shared his passion for League with the world by not only revealing what role he plays, but some of his favorite champions as well. You're you know in, in League of Legends and are you top five? Oh, good job. I'm a, I'm a top and I'm playing. Uh, who I'm playing right now? Gurgat, uh, Elawi. Uh, who I'm playing right now? I think I'm going to say those two. Right on. Yeah. From dunking on the basketball court to slapping his enemies with tentacles or executing them with ergots are, you can tell Jokic has a genuine passion for the rift. We grow up together and I play with a uh, fan that he's a little bit older than us, like yeah. two or three years older than us, and we are playing League of Legends. Here's hoping the Joker someday decides to grace us with a league stream. But while Jokic was busy perfecting his basketball game, Chandler Riggs took a break from escaping the zombie apocalypse to try his own hand at streaming. The young actor, best known as Carl from The Walking Dead, has been a vocal and an avid fan for League since 2014. Who's the favorite team you got going here? Between Curse and C9, I love both of them. Ooh. I'm super stoked. It's, uh, it's going great for Curse and I'm excited for that, but LMQ has put up a great fight. So I'm excited. What kind of role do you main? What do you like to play? I normally main jungle and support, uh, but I... The giver. Yeah. Always helping <laughs> yeah. out. All right. Exactly. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's what I play. Very good. So what kind of champions fall into those roles for you? Thresh, Leona, Vi, Elise are really my main champions that I play. Someone from The Walking Den maining a restless spirit warden just, yeah, feels right. While Riggs' shooting schedule for The Walking Dead didn't leave him tons of time to game, he said he loved to take advantage of the time he had when he was off set. We're a little busy on set, you know, I have 10 hour days, so it's pretty long days. But off set, I go over to my friend's house and we play, uh, we play games until like 2 in the morning. On Fridays, I, uh, I don't even go home, I just ride home with my friends and we play League until like 2 in the morning. We call them League Fridays. Celebrities are just like us after all. Riggs began to stream to raise money for charity, and his first broadcast on Twitch picked up huge amounts of viewers. 
upwards of 30,000 and led him to being able to play with various pros, including the odd one. While Riggs was fangirling over playing with league pros, the pros were fangirling over playing with Carl from The Walking Dead. Riggs attended multiple esports events, saying that while he was at the lowest tier and not likely to be playing in all-star games anytime soon, League was one of his favorite games to play with friends, among others like Minecraft and DayZ, and he wished he was able to go pro in gaming. Join the club, Chandler. While Riggs was playing with his friends on Friday nights, Jared Polis, the current governor and former state representative of Colorado, has been such an outspoken League fan that has even got him into legal and political trouble. Of all the shitty things politicians can do, who knew liking League of Legends would be one of the worst offenses? My name is Jared Polis. I'm a member of the United States House of Representatives for the 2nd Congressional District of Colorado, and I'm in Maokai. So opens a YouTube video where Polis talks about his long love for video games, stemming all the way back to an old 8-bit game called President-Elect. Figures. Polis has said that League has also brought him closer to his constituents who get a kick out of having fought on the rift with their congressmen. I mean, it, it does sound pretty badass. We like gaming. Uh, League of Legends is certainly one age of mythology. Uh, with our kids, uh, we do board games like Scrabble. So we always have a lot of fun, whether it's board games or computer games. So how did Polis's love of League lead him to being investigated by the House of Ethics Committee? Polis loved League so much that in 2015, he partnered with Riot to promote the game on their YouTube channel. This led to the House of Ethics Committee investigating him on the grounds that he had partnered with private companies as a potential source of illegal marketing. The case was ultimately dismissed, but you can believe it, this wasn't even the first time that Polis brought League into the political sphere. A few years earlier, Polis took to the League message boards with a lengthy message in an effort to fight the Stop Online Piracy Act, or SOPA, which would have had a significant impact on online gaming had it passed. I'm particularly concerned that SOPA might stifle the kind of innovation that brings us games we love, such as LOL, his post said. A politician going to the League forums to try and rally voters is both hilarious and genius. Like AOC, Polis found connections between League and his political life, saying that on the floor he felt like a jungler, swooping in to help motions get passed, and when he successfully did get a bill passed, it felt like winning a ranked match. He also likened the teamwork dynamics that are necessary for a successful League game to the teamwork that must be reached on the congressional floor. Someone tell that to the group in there now, please. Political jokes aside, musicians, athletes, and even high up people in Washington, D.C., no one can escape Lee's grasp. Thank you for watching the LOL Athlete. I hope you enjoyed this entertaining video.